You're listening to a podcast by Adelaide West Uniting Church. Today's episode, we talk about Bart and a few other things. Yeah, we actually did talk about Bart this time. Um, yeah, hi, welcome to Open Ended. <laughs> <laughs> the episode where we actually talk about Bart, and it yes. wasn't Craig who brought up Bart either. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably the person, who, the person who has read the least Bart brought up Bart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, it actually logically makes an awful lot of sense that the guy who wrote a huge book on um, the... Uh, the calling of people by God. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, what do you call that? That's um, I can't think of the word now. I'm having a mental blank. That's right. We don't really talk about that in the episode. Anyway. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, <laughs> really. it'll come to you the moment we start. Yeah, that's right. It's not coming. <laughs> yeah. Election. That's the word I'm looking for. There we go. Thank you. I don't know why that helps, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We. Yeah, covered quite a few things, talking about individual and collective discernment, Mm -hmm. um, how that all fits together. Uh, Talked about scripture a bit. I kept coming back. A lot. Yeah, we did. I kept coming back to that Romans. In fact, were you the only person who didn't reference anything on your notes? Oh, I think I think I did actually (laughs) talk about conforming to the pattern of this world. Oh, that's true. I did. I still wins verse. (laughs) (laughs) If you watch carefully, um, you'll actually see me grin when I realised that I had a line where I could steal Lynn's quote. (laughs) (laughs) There's a little smile creeps across my face, and I'm like, I'm ready to get you now. (laughs) If you see anyone look down just there, that's that's where Lynn's notes are taped up. That's right, because they can do it. They can do it without. Obviously, quite visible. And Romans 12 is my favourite chapter in the Bible. If there's one, and obviously that start it is a good chapter. Really speaks into a lot of what we were talking about. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. So you, you'll know how to unambiguously divine the will of God after this episode. It'll be <laughs> you'll you'll be able to go to an ice cream shop, pick the right flavour every time. Yeah, <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah, right. And yep. and you'll know that it's the right one because it will bear nothing but good spiritual fruit. <laughs> <laughs> And if you drop it on the pavement, you won't say Jesus Christ. No, you won't say Jesus Christ. (laughs) Or if you do, you'll understand that it's not. Well, you you won't be the. um, It'll be a big deal, but not as big a deal as As you thought. Yeah, that's (laughs) right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But as we as we um, the discussion went, we went to places we didn't expect to go. I don't think we expected to go anywhere in particular with this one. I don't think any of us really had. Well, because we were all a bit worried that we weren't going to know what to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going into this episode planning to sit here quietly because I had no idea. Well, you didn't. No. <laughs> but no it was a good chat. It was a very good chat, this one. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I think we teased a few things out that will be quite good for people to ponder. Mm. Love to um, hear what people think of it. Mm. What building, do you think? You we're know? building a big, beautiful podcast. And yeah. <laughs> Um, and we may end up doing more after this series. We're only committing to one series for now. But uh, if you've got questions you'd like us to answer, then email uh, Lynn. That. <laughs> email. <laughs> um, Gee, thanks. Yeah, or any of the uh, email like email addresses associated with Adelaide That's West. Right. I'll probably have something down in the uh, show notes or the YouTube description, depending on what platform you're watching the this church on. Church online one is a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, because yeah. that goes to a few of us. Yeah, not just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm, that was a good chat. It was a very good chat, so I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Open Ended. I'm Craig. I'm James. And I'm Lynn. This week we're exploring the question, how can we discern the will of God? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading his notes to these. They're mine. Get your yeah, eyes on. They're certainly not mine. <laughs> If you bring up Romans 12, I'll deck you over. <laughs> <laughs> That's my verse today. Oh, I don't have a verse for today. Maybe 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 to 22. You do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. It's just notes. I feel like you cheated looking up stuff. <laughs> oh, really? In yeah. the Bible? Yeah, it's cheating. Oh, cheating. Oh, it's not You're good. supposed to know it off the top of your head. That's the, that's the point of this oh, podcast. No, it's to prove how clever we are, isn't it? No. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, if, like, that would be leaning on your own understanding. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So no original thoughts. That's... <laughs> Wait. So you need to discern <laughs> what it is that we're actually going I to be talking about. I feel like about. there's a paradox in there. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. Yeah, you don't need to feel. me <laughs> and I'm feeling a little confused. <laughs> don't worry, I'm also confused. <laughs> I think if we knew what we were talking about, we wouldn't be on this podcast. <laughs> no, that's right. So, um, 
So, what is discernment? Does anyone have a nifty little definition? How, what, do we, what do we mean when we say discernment? Mm. I wish I'd Googled the etymology. Yeah, I wish I'd. <laughs> <laughs> but you I don't thought have, of the question. Yeah, I, I don't know if I... Oh, yeah, I guess I did, yeah. I think it was in response to a conversation with you, maybe. I don't remember. Oh, okay. It's been several yeah. weeks now, so I, I can't remember mm. where this one came from, but here we are. Um, it's, we talk, I guess we talk a lot about um, praying over things and certain decisions and stuff, but how do you know what the answer is, I, um, is almost one way of thinking about yeah. it. And, uh, and even if you're not praying, you know, God will call us to do things from time to time. And so how do you know when it's God and when it's something else, when it's just your own yeah. head or um, something like that? Yeah, it's probably uh, a process of clarifying uh, different options and then choosing the option that you believe uh, God is calling you to. Yeah, but how do you know which one God's calling you to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that's jumping ahead because you're asking the okay, definition. Yeah. You're asking the definition no, that's of discernment. Right. You're right. not, so, 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 like, I'd say that, dis that the process of discernment is, is you know, or no, the meaning of the word, not the process. Now I'm getting caught up in trying yeah, to that's right. jump, right. jumping ahead. I would say a, a, a definition of discernment really is um, it's sifting options, looking through what's before you in order to choose a particular direction. How do you choose which particular option is a horrifying thought? And that's the, the topic of today's discussion, I suppose, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I would say in that process of choosing, uh, we are looking for the um, yes, yeah, sort of the godly option yeah. um, yes. out of those as well, because we, we discern in all sorts of different ways. Um, but I think t to be able to discern what the right option in any given scenario is, you need to know what outcome you're moving towards. Uh, and in this case, it's it's enacting the will of God, I think, is um, what yes. the end goal is. So it's it's trying to pick the best option in order to enact that ends, I guess. Yeah. Which does raise that um, horrible uh, spectre of like, is everything already predetermined, mm -hmm. or is there such a thing as uh, free choice? Well, my uh, this wasn't supposed to be the free will episode, but we can do. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're into free will and predestination now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my uh, to. Do the quickest justification for why free will exists I can possibly do. Um, I think that uh, the biblical uh, justification that I've got for free will is that Adam and Eve ate the apple. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You can't. We know that we have free will because um, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God mm -hmm. early on in the Bible. And if everything was predetermined, then yeah, why? Th there's no point in having a choice there. Um, and uh, and then sort of in my own experience a bit more, uh, I've wanted to believe for a long time that anyone given the right help can uh, grow and get better. But the hard truth I've had to learn is that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Mm -hmm. So why don't some horses drink? The only reason I can come to is free will. So people do yes. enough dumb stuff yes. that free will yeah. must exist because... Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't have... It's not that it must exist, but uh, it, free will makes sense of a lot of things for me in that context. Yeah. Um, and if everything's predetermined, then uh, we can just pack up and go home on this conversation anyway. So, I, yeah. so at the very least, I think yeah. for the purposes of this conversation, we have to assume that we, assume um, there is free will. There is free will. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I was going to play devil's advocate and, uh, on the on the Genesis example, but I think I'll leave it alone because we can talk about that another time. <laughs> I, I, I am definitely, I definitely personally land in the in the free choice well actually i kind of land about halfway between the two but yeah. but that's a complicated answer that we don't need now yeah I, I, think, <laughs> I think i probably do as well but um the fact that free will is in the mix uh changes yeah. like that that creates a certain shape of the way that we approach things i think yeah so um, for the purpose of this uh, this discussion assume, we'll assume that free will exists assume that free will exists because yeah. we're talking about how can we discern the will of god yeah and so if we know that free will exists that then we have a role in discerning, yeah. don't we? Mm. So it's not just a case of um, uh, of just making, uh, of just following some l nice plan. I mean, it's almost like some Christians would like to have, you know, like a, a um, an email from God yeah. saying, you will do this, 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 and this. This is my plan for you. It's good, pleasing, and perfect. There you go. Mm. We don't have that. So how do we discern? Because it would be very comforting 
to have that. Wouldn't it be nice? You wouldn't have to worry too much, would you, really? That's right. And and one thing that I, I think when we talk about discernment as opposed to, like, we can just make decisions. Like, I got up this morning and I made a decision about what I wore. Um, I don't discern that. Mm. I don't believe that there's a plan that I have to wear a certain thing. Mm. Um, you know, I just made a decision. But when we come to discernment, there's this... Um, it's a much heavier thing, isn't it? And, and and I think discernment for us as Christians is something we do together. We make decisions along the way. Um, we decide uh, how we're going to drive to a destination. We're on, in a car, although there are rules and parameters for that. But discernment is about the the bigger decisions in life. Mm. It's, um, it's almost deciding uh, where you're going rather than deciding the route to get there yes, as much, I suppose, yes. in the analogy you were alluding to yes yeah and now to be completely contentious i'm going to i'm going to disagree with you and say that <laughs> that discernment well, that's, that's the role of this so i think like i think on the surface level it does look like the important decisions are the ones that that, that are a process of discernment and the smaller ones aren't mm -hmm. but in actual fact the bigger decisions that you make actually affect all the smaller ones so like even yes. if you just so if you discern um uh you know if you have a vision in your head of what a good life looks like and you live into that vision um, every decision that you make is part of that vision whether it be small or big they actually contribute to yes. that that picture so in a sense um, you might discern the big picture and then the other things actually fall into place within that um, like what you wear like for example do you choose to go to um, a fancy uh, department store and buy designer label clothes or do you go to Target and get your t-shirts from there mm. like I do because um, I love their t-shirts um, and uh, if you're watching that's a sponsorship plug um, <laughs> uh, please email us <laughs> or, or do you make decisions on ethical yeah yeah exactly, the exactly. Clothing because, is ethical or not exactly yeah. so so in a sense like even when it comes down to something as simple as clothing we actually do do discernment mm -hmm. um but it's based on the bigger picture discernment that we do yeah i, I think it, it fits into the analogy of um one of the uh, the destination versus the route as well it's once you know what your destination is then picking a route becomes a lot easier yeah uh yeah. so it's probably a similar thing to that of just um yeah, is this decision going to be an aid of getting me to that destination as opposed to do I want to go left or right at this intersection, yeah. you know? Um, also, I think those decisions can happen almost unconsciously because we, ha because we have this picture in our... It's like a picture that we have in our heads, not, not words. Mm -hmm. And we just our imagination just fills in the blanks. So when we go to a shop, we might, not say, we might not particularly say, oh, I'm going there because I think it's good. We just feel good because we're doing something that fits with the vision that's, mm -hmm. that's there. Um, and the challenge, I guess, for us is to have a biblical picture in our head of what, what that life yes. looks like, yeah. which is a huge challenge. So that we flow into God's plan, yeah. Yeah. In, a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could absolutely just take a tiny little step into body and territory as well from here and say that it's important to get to know who God is and the character of God. Yes. Um, because once you know the character of God, then you've got an idea of, uh, you know, what the value set you um, like yeah. you should be working with it. Yeah, exactly. So if you, if you, um, the, the kind of person that you picture yourself being wants to be modeled after, uh, Christ, which is of course for Bart, the beginning and end of all theology, who is, who is the Christ. Um, and so we, uh, since you brought Bart up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you brought Bart up. I was going to say, this is episode four and you haven't actually done it yet. So someone has. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because every conversation ends up. Bart is in there. Well, all, all the ones that aren't recorded, apparently. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we do swing back to the Bible as being very important for discernment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I, I feel like there's a few different prongs to discernment because uh, Scripture is absolutely uh, a really important uh, sort of... Sorry, you can tell I've been I'm in my third year of a science degree. Uh, it's a very useful validation tool. Um, uh, because if, if what you're saying aligns with uh, not just individual bits of scripture, but uh, lots and lots yeah, of the overall yeah. picture of scripture, yes. then yeah. you've got some idea that you're on the right track. But um, it's, it's also important to have, uh, you know, your own experience um, factoring into it as well, because uh, you, we can't, 
make sense of the Bible in a vacuum either. And so I think understanding, um, like, the, I think a lot of a lot of people tend to forget their own lived reality in favor of Scripture as this kind of high truth. And obviously, Scripture is very very important, but. Ah, it's, I'm getting a bit vague because I'm not entirely sure what it is I'm, I'm saying at the moment. Well, this is actually the challenge. That's, yeah. the, that's the challenge because as soon as you say, okay, it's biblical and yes, we know it's not verse by verse because that's ridiculous. Like if you try to discern, it, it's like the, the old, like oh, close your eyes, open to a page and stab a, stab a verse. You can yeah. make that fit whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so as soon as you say it's not that, then it's actually more no, it the vibe of the Bible. Yeah. You know, it, you, you're being steeped in the culture of the word, mm. but you're also steeped in that by your community because we don't read individually like the meanings of mm. the passages are actually shaped by the communities that we live in um and uh all of these things come together and, and it's a it's vague it doesn't mm. it doesn't have that nice concreteness to it that you can just go again like that's what not that, black and yeah, white. yeah. yeah. The, again it comes back to what yeah. you were saying about there's not it's not a plan and the, the yeah. bible is definitely not a a, a guidebook to mm. uh, a rule or a plan it's more like romans 12 <laughs> you got it <laughs> i did say earlier that if craig pinched that i was gonna deck him <laughs> <laughs> but it is more like that isn't it it is uh, don't be conformed mm -hmm. to the to the the way or the culture of this world uh, to the thinking of this world be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. um and so it's i mean i think that gets a handle on the kind of vagueness yeah, yeah a, a way that i quite like to uh think about the way that we engage with scripture in terms of discernment um is understanding it again not so much as a, a book of absolute truths because that i think is selling it short and yeah. makes it very one-dimensional um but it's using it as a whole wealth of extra data of other people's experience of god yes. yeah. and so figuring out where your experience of of god and the way god speaks to you because god speaks in so many different ways to so many different people throughout the bible mm, um, right. i'm yet to see him show up as a pillar of fire personally mm -hmm. but i hear that's possible so yes, that's on that's, that's on right. the tape it's on the tape <laughs> that's right um if he does you know you've probably gone wrong somewhere <laughs> it's, it's really really important to you know, do, follow, do follow do yeah. follow um <laughs> Yeah, uh, but using the Bible as uh, yeah as as a wealth of data, as a wealth of different varying experiences of people who have um, interacted with God in varying ways, and then figuring out you know sort of what the what sort of the common patterns are through there, and uh, the types of things that God is likely to say and call people to do, and how much information different people get at different times and things. It means that that then gives me some idea of what a message from God feels like, given that it is such a diversely experienced thing yes. um so that for me is, is more the role of scripture than yeah finding the you know the clearly defined uh you know ways that you go you know you step through you go through steps one through eight and then and then yeah, you'll I, know i mean and yeah. it's, it's not to say that the whole thing is hopelessly vague either because um one, one, you can seep yourself in the culture of the Bible and that can transform your imagination and the kind of way that you live in the world. And also, um, you, like, like you're saying, you interact with it and you look for those, uh, those common experiences and things like that. But also I think like um, people, people like me need things that are much more clear as well, which sometimes just mm -hmm. like, you know, where it says in the Bible, don't murder people, that's important to me because like, yeah. otherwise I might imagine that's possible, mm -hmm. um, especially when I've been cut off in traffic and I'm feeling a bit, a bit angry. Like, um, I'm the sort of person that needs to be told, um, okay, no, God is definitely saying don't murder don't this murder person because that contradicts, yeah. you know, a clear thing. Um, uh, and certainly something that gives me uh, uncomfortable pause as a Westerner is the, uh, the way that Jesus talks about wealth on a regular basis mm -hmm. as being um, something that uh, can drag our eyes away from uh, yeah. what God would, you know, it, it's something that will uh, tempt us to discern a completely different will of God quite often. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, wealth is a real trap in, in discernment because it's, um, I, I've heard people say um, how do you, how they discern where God is calling them is to follow the money and I I, I immediately react to that um, yes. um, because I'm like didn't didn't Jesus say literally the opposite of that yeah. <laughs> yeah. so there is some clarity it's not all it's not all vague yeah I mean within that then there's there's a horrifying minefield of vagueness but yeah but do not conform to the pattern of this world I yeah. mean that talks about um, 
attitudes and desires and and not seeking that wealth or status or or whatever that is because we're not conforming to the world the world is speaking about wealth and status and power yeah yeah. um but we're not conforming and that's part of that drawing near to god being renewed being transformed um so that we are flowing in to the will of god Mm. uh in a different way i think that's really important Mm. because it's it's I have heard so often, um, not as much recently, but I've heard often in my life, oh, God told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very it's a very uncomfortable, I find that an uncomfortable statement. God told me, well, if God told you and, he, and God hasn't told me, does that mean that I'm not yeah, hearing from me. God or I don't know. I... It reminds me of a story that I probably shouldn't tell, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Of um, I, was, I was seeing this girl, we, we'd been out on a few dates and um, she rings me up one evening and she says, look, I've been praying and I feel like God is saying to me that uh, we're meant to just be friends, so there shouldn't be anything here. And... I wasn't that emotionally invested in this relationship, so um, I was particularly cheeky. And I went, well, that's really odd because I've been praying and um, I've just said that God is saying that we should be together. (laughs) Just because I wanted to see how she'd actually get out of that. Um, Because, uh, you know, we, we we can be so certain of things like that. And perhaps, in actual fact, what we needed to do was actually just own our own emotions and oh, and, and recognize. Yeah. Actually, I'm just not feeling it with this one, you know. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that actually um, brings me to something that I wondered if it was going to come up because um, uh, you brought up the Ten Commandments before. Yeah. Um, the one that says, "Don't take the Lord's name in vain." Mm. Um, for a lot, most people, and for me, for a lot of my life, it's you know, don't say, like don't say Jesus Christ when you drop your coffee on the ground and spill it everywhere, um, <laughs> is how it's often interpreted. Um, but an interpretation that I heard that fits in a lot better with a lot of other scripture, but also feels more alive to me, is uh, more of having that in terms of false prophecy. It's essentially mm. don't bear false witness mm. against God. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And, and having that... It's much stronger. It is much stronger. Mm. Um, and especially given that uh, the Bible doesn't have a lot of leniency for false yeah. prophets in yeah. a lot of other places as well. So it would make sense to me that that would make it into the Ten Commandments. Um, that also feels like it like that feels like a sin that warrants being yeah, engraved in stone a little bit yeah. more as well. Um, I'm not saying that we should, you know, um, like invoke the name of God and Christ when uh, things are going wrong. Or but at the same time, I, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I don't. Unless it's a prayer for actual help, you know. Well, yeah, that's different. It, um, <laughs> if it was me dropping my coffee, I think I'd actually need Jesus help <laughs> yeah. at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lord, give me peace. Is really, is really what it is. Um, Back to murder again all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, and so I think that I think is something that would be it would help a lot. I think if if we really took uh, that kind of thing really seriously of not mm. saying that God told us to do something yeah. Yeah. unless it really is something you um, feel compelled to. And in my experience, when uh, when I felt that God has called me to uh, to do or say something, um, a lot of the time when that's actually the case, I won't use the phrase God told mm. me. It'll um, often be there'll often be some caveats for things like that. It would be more. This is what I'm experiencing. It'll be something like I feel like God's telling me, or I'm yes. just getting the sense I need to say this, and I won't even necessarily bring yeah. God into it explicitly, um, because when it feels like it's something that needs to happen, I'm not focused so much on whether or not it's coming from uh, like God per se. I'm more focused on doing the thing because yeah. it really does feel. I feel compelled to do that thing because it's yeah. it feels like the right thing to do. Um, and so for me, part of the reason why, uh, you know, God said uh, sort of like makes me a little suspicious is because yeah. I would never say that if yeah. I actually meant yeah. it. And I'm not saying other people, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying other people wouldn't, but to me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little just uh, flag for suspicion. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the only time I've ever had a God said to me um, moment was I was praying, like, what do I do with my life? I need to work out, I need to work out what job I'm going to have. I still haven't worked that out just in case you're wondering, but. Um, I was I think I have for you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like God's saying. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There's definitely a piece about being at Adelaide West at this time. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm praying, you know, uh, I must be in my early 20s, you know, just praying, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? You know, um, I'm not enjoying my uni course at the moment. Should I do something different? Um, and I did the thing where you open the Bible to a page 
and I opened it and it was the Beatitudes. Mm. And suddenly I was like, oh, that's not helpful because like I was looking, I was looking more for like, you know, can you tell me what job? Should I be a doctor or a nurse yeah, exactly. or, a, or a teacher or something like that? And, and, and um, God said to me, your vocation is to um, be poor in spirit, to be humble, to be, and I was like, well, I can do that doing anything. Bingo, you got yeah, the point. that's right. Exactly. Ah, right. It's about uh, who you are, not what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. My, my vocation is very clear. My vocation is I'm called to live like the Beatitudes. That's the correct. the yeah. job that I'm doing at the time might actually be a challenge to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but on some level, it's also kind of circumstantial but, what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's, it's I, even with that, which is a, to me, it was a very clear sense of call. Mm. Um, I don't go to the extreme of saying God said that to me because I think that's self-evident if you yeah. if, if if I said that if I told you that story you wouldn't need me to say God no, said no. to me yeah. no. because you go my heart warms to this because it feels right yeah and that, and the scripture continues to speak yeah and that's what I was saying before about the um, I forgot how you put it now James but it says something about the scripture um, it's not a one-dimensional, mm, yeah. but it's, you know, it, it's a, a higher importance and it continues to speak to us. Uh, and one of the things about that is how many different ways that God speaks. So, you know, mm. for instance, when when um, the, the apostles were looking for another apostle to replace Judas, they cast lots. Yeah. So that is... Biblical, mm. you know, um, that's be, in, our, in in casting lots in our days would you know be the equivalent of choosing a disciple by playing bingo. Yeah, yeah that's right. It just doesn't quite. Which you know, it, it's essentially a form of divination, which yeah. is not in vogue in Christianity these days. No, so, no. but that is what. And then when they later on, when they were looking at ways of doing food distribution, um, they were discerning together about something that. Um, perhaps wasn't seen as spiritual, mm. but more mundane or, or more administrative, perhaps. Uh, and so there was a discernment process there that wasn't casting lots. Or you have, um, you know, the way that God spoke to the Israelites was in so many different. We had mm. the pillar of fire, but yeah. we have um, many other ways that God sort of led them over that time or they were to the discern the will of God. So we, we go to Scripture and we find mm, there's no neat answer here. Yeah. In fact, just as, we're talk just as you were talking, I had this picture in my mind of, of God watching the disciples cast lots going, it doesn't matter what dice comes up with because whoever you give me, I will work with that. Mm. Yeah. Um, which comes yeah. back to full circle to what you were saying at the start about free choice. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost like God is saying, you can pick anybody because whoever you pick, um, yes, I... I can work with them. Yeah. Um, that's a, a quite a nice picture of grace as well yeah. because that actually yes. then... That actually reflects on us as well god picks us mm -hmm. um to you know a barthian thing again the doctrine yeah. of election <laughs> yeah uh, god chooses us um and it's an odd choice because uh why would a righteous god choose someone like me yeah. and give me a vocation to preach and things like that when um there are clearly people who are much more godly than me um <clears throat> it's it's irrelevant god will work with who god will work with because yes. um the act of god um, transforming us into Christ likeness is uh, God's work, not ours. Mm. And similar to that, uh, I think when I this would have been when I was in high school, I think, because I was going through a big um, yeah, I was going through a, a bit of a discernment and kind of big prayer kind of phase. Um, a season, I should say. If I say phase, it makes it sound like <laughs> I'm kind of done with prayer. Season, no, no, I was going through. Right. I was going through a, a particularly prayer focused season, mm. um, and. Uh, and I'm also someone who is always just desperately trying to do the right thing as best I can. Um, the idea of making a wrong choice is terrifying to me. Uh, but something that gave me a bit of peace through that was that um, if, you know, what, what if God calls me and I don't go? Um, mm -hmm. What happens is, well, then I don't get the honor of being the hands that God uses in that instance. Yeah. Someone else will be. And that's my loss. But ultimately, I, that's, that's what I chose. And that's OK. They will, yeah. Like, yeah. God will use me again later um, no, or give me an opportunity to, yeah, right. um, to be used again later. Mm. Uh, and I think it's, yeah, that, that ties into what you were saying quite nicely, I think, because I think it's very, we get caught up in the idea of God having a plan and it being this really hyper-specific plan. Yes. 
I don't think that's the case. I think there is uh, there is a kind of endpoint in a way, but it's it's general. It's a value yeah. set rather than uh, a specific set of circumstances or whatever. And so anything that moves to a place that is just as alive with love as what the kingdom of God is supposed yeah, to be, then that there's a lot of different options to that. It's um, it's not something that it's. Uh, something that's quite resistant to entropy because there's so many different iterations that are valid, I guess. Uh, which, yeah, is part of the reason why it's so robust. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the end goal is set out for us, not in terms of our personal life, but in terms of the, the global redemption of the world and of all, all people. We know that that's where this is tracking to. Yeah. But God is amazing. Like, we can, we, can, uh, we can essentially live into the time in between Jesus and when things are set right. And wherever we go, God will work it towards his end anyway. Um, so that not a specific end, like you say, but, yeah. but the, the ultimate end of um, universal peace and love. Um, and now we're starting to skirt a little bit more into predetermination territory as well. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what we do then. <laughs> um, everything will work out just fine. <laughs> so, yeah, and I think there is a sense of, uh, of that to a certain degree in Scripture. Yeah. Um, um, something else I was going to say connected to what you said, and I can't remember now. Well, I'll just tie a little bow on the thing that I just said, given that I opened yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know... It's up to us whether or not we participate, and if we don't participate, then it's kind of our loss, really. Yes. Um, it's yeah. every, Everything will be set right, and it's up to us if we choose to participate in that or not. And choosing to participate usually is the more rewarding and life-giving option. So. Yeah. 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 And once again, it's the, you know, God has the plan. God has the mission. We get to participate in mm. that rather than we get to do it. Yeah. And, I, and I think in... we. There's a lot of um, literature, books, articles, and so forth are about finding uh, the plan for us. Mm. Yeah. When it's about flowing in with the plan of God. Yeah. <laughs> so the focus is completely different. Uh, and, and, and yet, on the other hand, I understand it because one thing I was thinking of uh, as we we're preparing for this was... Actually, I don't know if I've preached much on how to discern yeah. the will of God. And and perhaps we should be. Yeah. Because isn't this a question, one of the, the big questions that comes mm. up for Christians? You know, what, what do I do with my life? Um, should How do I discern the will of God? You know, which vocation? Uh, do I stay in the job where I, uh, I'm in? Who do I marry? Um, do I marry? Uh, you know, mm. all of these, they're big questions that we, we ask all those questions. And what are we as... Um, saying we here as you and I as preachers actually helping people to actually gra grapple and grasp yeah. something of that because I, I think this is a a much we, we when you came up with this question we just went oh yes how to discern the will of God but the more we think about it this actually goes in with people's everyday lives yeah. in a really important way yeah. you know in a you know this, this affects my life mm. um, hugely, whereas we tend to think of it as um, for us individually. But if we're flowing in with God's will, yeah. flowing in with God's will for the world, mm. for us as a people, for us as a church, for us as a community, for and then naturally the individual is a part of that. Mm. Um, you know, it, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think of, um, you know, for, first and foremost, I'm called... Uh, to be a follower of Christ. It, you know, we don't need to discern much to know that that's what we're all called mm. to be, is to be a follower of Christ. But um, I did have a, uh, in 1997, uh, I was at an ordination service where I first heard, um, it's, it's one of the only times in my life where I've heard the call of God on my life. So a little bit like you're opening the Bible in a hut moment. It was an a yeah, hut yeah, moment. Not that I recommend you, know. you do that. <laughs> it, unless you feel called to. <laughs> unless you discern that's the right way to go. Yeah. Um, so somewhere in that, um, I was at an ordination service. Uh, I was up at um, uh, Aberfoyle Uniting Church, uh, which later became our church, but it wasn't at the time. And um, somewhere through the message, 
uh, by the end of it, I knew I was called to be in ordained ministry. It was a, the weirdest thing. Mm. And that was in 1997. Uh, and then when I went home, um, my husband, Craig, I've got a couple of Craigs in my life, but my husband, Craig, um, didn't didn't feel that was the way for us to go at the time. And I just, I just parked it because, you know, anybody can be in the ministry, but Craig's called me, uh, God's called me to be Craig's wife. And so, you know, that's, that's where we flowed together. And then I ended up working in the Uniting Church, in property and so forth. And finally, it just bubbled up mm. and there was just no mistaking it. People were commenting and, and so forth. And I went to these various panels that we have in the Uniting Church, a period discernment panel and then a selection panel, um, which ironically I now chair. Mm. Um, but they were discernment processes together. So, and I remember going to those panels and, you know, do you feel called? And I said, well, actually, I'm not going to say that I feel called. I'm open to this um, because discernment is something we do together. Mm -hmm. So it's only as we come together, I'm not going to stand there and go, well, you know, I'm called to uh, to be a minister and, and you lot just need to, you know, uh, yeah. understand that. I mean, that there there's, yeah, yeah. there's not a submission in that into the processes of, of the church or the discernment of the church but it was a case of if at the end of this we all sense that this is right then I will say that I'm called to be an ordained minister so I was ordained in in uh, 2019 I first heard that in 1997 uh, but the experiences that I've had in the meantime of serving God have over and over again are they uh, they are just right for here at Adelaide West. There you go. That's mm. God, isn't it? That yeah. the experiences that we have aren't, you know, was was I meant to be straight into a ministry in 1998? No, I don't think I was. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so there was a discernment process that actually took over 20 years. Mm. And that's okay. Yeah. And what you're saying is reminded me of what I was going to say before now, which is um, patience is an important part of the sermon. <laughs> not just, funny that it took a while for that not, to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, not, and not, even, ironic. not even, not even our, just, not just our patience, but also the mem remembering that God is incredibly patient. Stanley, Stanley, yes. Stanley Hulwas likes to say um, that God has all the time in the world um, yeah. because God literally has infinite time. And so God is incredibly patient um, and we tend to be the ones that are in a hurry. Mm. Um, which also brought me to another thing about discernment, which is um, connected to what you said about it being a group thing that we discern together. Yeah. Um, quite often discernment can be something that we're doing because we're actually being incredibly selfish because we want it like, uh, yeah. instead of recognizing that we are characters in God's story, we yes. tend to cast ourselves as the protagonist of the story That's and God right. is the agent who is there to help us along our journey to greatness or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that so much better than I was trying to say that um, before. The uh, the selfish like so so I remember being sick one time and sort of being frustrated with God that that God wouldn't get rid of the sickness and realizing that oh I'm asking God to finish the finish with sin and death today because I'm done with it. <laughs> like if you don't mind, like I know I know you've got this big plan to get rid of sin and death, but <laughs> actually it's it would suit me right now. <laughs> but it would actually suit me if you finish with sin and death today because I'm actually dealing with it. Um, and to recognise, oh okay, so uh, it's it's God's story, uh, yes. not my story. Um, and that uh, yes, God God um, leads us. But often it's a it's a corporate process yes. um, where we uh, are not just discerning God's will for ourselves, but often as a community. Um, and it comes back, I guess, as well to that the the life that we imagine. If we if we're talking together about the life that we imagine as a yeah. church together in a place, that is discernment mm -hmm. of the vision of God for our family in this place. Yes. Um, and then that shapes our imagination of how we do everything, you know, like from washing dishes to cleaning toilets to preaching to um, how much we spend on a car park. Everything all flows out of what we've discerned together is actually the picture of life that we want to have. Mm. <clears throat> the I think a lot of the stuff that's been said about uh, sort of corporate discernment is really good because I think uh, as a society, we quite often forget about the collective aspect of things. Um, the one thing I do want to just wind back on is that there is absolutely still... Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, 
There's one image uh, in scripture that for me just marries the idea of individualism and collectivism just so perfectly and beautifully, which is the image of the body of Christ. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because what is God's will for the body flows into the decisions of all the parts. Mm. But every part of the body still needs to find what part of the body that is and how to best be that part and what yes. other bits of the body it needs to be connected with in order to function. Yeah. Uh, and so it's important to understand that uh, you know, while obviously we need to figure out and discern uh, what is right for us individually, ultimately it is in service of that collective body yes. Yes. Um, that is then enacting God's will. And so there's, it's like it's 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 like a kind of selfless self centeredness in a way that's yeah. required yeah. for some of it because um, because yeah, because whatever part of the body we are is there to be done in service to the yeah. rest of the body. Yes. It's it's like the story of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Like we don't want a Bonhoeffer who doesn't discern like necessarily individually the call of God to the gospel because um, around him all the pastors yeah. were taking the money from the German state and towing yes. the Nazi line mm. and Bonhoeffer says no, no this is not in alignment with um, with God this stuff is wrong um, and he's actually standing out against Christian community with a prophetic mm. voice um, so we don't want to necessarily say that, that, that there are never individual calls either because yeah. then there's a danger that you you squash the Bonhoeffers and we don't want to do that we yeah. like well, and I mean all, all the prophets through throughout the entire exactly and, and even Jesus uh, as well so again uh, using scripture as, uh, as a big thing yeah because because obviously the prophetic uh, tradition has continued since um, the last bit of the New Testament to get written yeah whatever Absolutely. that was I don't know <laughs> my history well enough but mm. yeah so one of the ways that um, I've heard of that I've found helpful in terms of individual and personal discernment when you're actually looking like how do I personally discern stuff um, comes from um, Parker Palmer who if you're not familiar with Parker Palmer is a, a Christian educational expert and he actually said and the, the image has stuck with me ever since that quite often um, discernment is about testing doors to see if they're open or closed mm -hmm. um, if the, uh, you know if, if you go to open a certain door and it, it won't budge and you go out the window instead well that was the path yeah. that was open to you that's that's actually a good way of doing discernment mm -hmm. um, is to I guess you know take the chances when they when they come but also recognize open and closed doors mm -hmm. as um, sometimes not resistance against the will of God but uh, actually, actually a, a part of mm, the process yeah. which goes back to what you said just earlier right at the beginning I think you said about sifting through options yeah uh, and you know t testing the doors that's a good image mm -hmm. a, a phrase that's helped me a lot has been uh, listen to the blocks which is if yeah, sometimes yeah. if there is a if there's a bit of a block, it, yeah. it's just maybe now's not the time. Because again, mm. we as humans have a habit of being impatient. Yes. Um, particularly those of us diagnosed with ADHD. So, <laughs> when, when, when you said listen, want to, to, and we want it now. Yeah. When you said listen to the blocks, I immediately I pictured in my head a wooden box. Yes, <laughs> <I know. laughs> so, like blocks. Oh, blocks, not <laughs> blocks, Craig. <Yeah. laughs> I was doing the same thing. Yeah. I'm going. Oh, just unpack this a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. that's true. Um, yeah. And that's part of the reason why it's taken so long for us to record all these episodes. It's because we've been listening to the bits of resistance as we've gone as well, because, you know, we all want to have our brains more or less plugged in when we're recording yeah, these yeah, and not, yeah, be too, yeah. not be too stressed and if things. Preferably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like that because there are, you know, when you think of um, the things that happen in our lives, and we're still, in a sense, looking for that path. <laughs> that path through the garden, that path through life or whatever. Uh, but to think of the, the closed doors or the blocks, for instance, as helpful in that. Yeah. And a, a, not a hindrance, but a help. Mm. It helps yeah. me to think about I, and more I th clearly about it. And I think it's it's funny because we can get caught into this uh, contradiction where we simultaneously want one clear path, but we also yeah. want to be able to go wherever we want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And you don't get both. Uh, the, yeah. the more freedom you get, the less clarity you get. The more clarity you get and the more power you get, the less freedom you tend to get. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, if you're going to have to accept some blockages if you want a nice clear path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, the other thing that can happen sometimes... Yeah, in the process of discernment, uh, is sometimes God sends a big fish. Uh, you could, and I was thinking of the big fish earlier. Yeah, with Jonah. yeah Jonah was the obvious oh, elephant. Jonah yeah. was the elephant. No, the Leviathan in the room. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, because there's definitely been some things in my life that I haven't wanted to be the case um, and I haven't been able to get away from it. Um, and in the previous episode of this, I, I mentioned sort of my journey discerning my gender. And I think I said that that was me living into the person that God's calling me to be. That's been a big fish for me. <laughs> um, I really didn't want to have to deal with that. I wanted to just be able to, like, a, a lot of people have wanted me to be normal for a while, and I've tried very, very hard, and it's just not working. Um, the uh, And the second, uh, well, not the second, because it's been a very long and arduous process, but the more I've embraced that part of me, the more I've seen uh, Fruits of the Spirit come to bear, which has mm. been a great confirmation that this isn't me listening internally to my own selfish desires, but no, this is actually, uh, you know, me living into what God has made me to be in the face of, uh, you know, sort of culture at large, which I think goes back to the um, sort of the individual, more prophetic Bonhoeffery type thing of sometimes, sometimes the world is wrong yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you are right. Um, yeah. and, and that it takes and yeah, I'm not saying that as someone who, it takes a lot for me to think I'm right about something as well. I like to do my homework. Um, yeah, but I just try as I might, that's something I haven't been able to get away from. And as more time has passed, I've realized this is not, um, it's not so much a thought on my side, it's a big fish. So, big fish, uh, big guy. So yeah, sometimes, sometimes you can't get away from, you can't get away from things as well. Uh, and other times you have to really go sifting through to try and find the right thing because as I think I said at the outset, it happens differently every time, just about. But I like what you said about the fruit of the Spirit, mm. right at the beginning of that, where um, that I've heard people say things like, God's told me, or and we've talked about that sort of thing. But there isn't a... Um, uh, th there's a there's an arrogance mm. that goes with that that doesn't show the fruit of the spirit and and maybe in in discerning the will of the God of God we um, growing in the fruit of the spirit is actually one of the ways that we see that we are following that we are discerning God's will that we are following God in the way that God wants mm. us to follow uh, is uh, experiencing and seeing the fruit of the spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's interesting that you mentioned arrogance there as well, because I was trying to think. I feel like that goes against one of them. It's, it's humility. Yeah. Um, yeah, humility and peace are probably both threatened by uh, framing it in that kind of a way as well. So I think that's. So I think that's probably why uh, when you and I hear people speak like that, it kind of. Um, yeah, uh, arcs us, well, not arcs us up a bit, but it's why it sort of raises a couple of flags. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I'd actually pinpointed it as it's actually mm. antithetical to spiritual fruit yeah. mm. or at least it's showing signs of that I, I you know i don't think it's right to you know have some big blanket statement of anyone who uses that exact phrase is wrong obviously but no. at the same time it's um yeah when you do detect a degree of arrogance it can be mm. um a bit of a sign that yeah maybe this isn't bearing the right fruit yeah and we are called to bear fruit mm. And that, that is our calling. It takes us back to the Beatitudes too, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. We are called to flow in, to have those attitudes in our lives uh, more than what we're called to be a certain in a certain vocation. Mm, yeah. That is a far greater calling on our lives um, for every one of us. Mm. And so discerning the will of God, in a sense, you know, one of the things is will will. I um, grow in the fruit of the spirit in this. If the answer is no, then then you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's also very easy, I think, to slip into a trap. Uh, going back to uh, the Romans verse and uh, you know sort of the you know the ways of and the shape and patterns of our society. When you actually stop and take time to think about what bits of your life actually make you happy, yeah. when you when you take time, because we're, we're always rushing from one thing to the next, never yeah. actually stopping and thinking about how what we just did made us feel. Yeah. Uh, and it's very easy to replace your own feelings about something with how you know it's supposed to make you feel. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I uh, have talked about a lot is, uh, with in a few different instances is thinking about how happy you think Donald Trump actually is. This is someone who's got so much access to so much money and yet is clearly miserable. I can't imagine him mm. genuinely happy except possibly gleeful, like being gleeful at someone else's downfall, maybe. That's not joy, though. Yeah. Um, and so it's, 
it's it's very important i think to yeah to continuously check in with ourselves and seeing what fruit is actually coming out of what we're doing mm -hmm. um which i think yeah going to um we oh yeah did, did you you've mentioned it so many times the um, <laughs> um uh the selling everything you want and giving it to the poor oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um that, that challenge yeah dreadful my <laughs> well i mean my, my take on my take on that particular one is that um it is what we are literally called to do that however it's not a good idea in our case because we don't have the community around us to support us um, effectively, so there's actually a, a, a small social structure. It's a systemic issue. Yeah, it is a systemic issue. Yeah, um, if uh, if we had a community around us where everyone was actually pulling everything together to make sure everyone was okay, it might be a bit more feasible to do that. But we're currently not in a culture no. that allows us to do that within the church. I would argue, um, but to think about what would happen if you really did radically chase all the fruits of the spirit, you can see mm -hmm. how just only interacting with money as little as possible so that yes. you can acquire what you need to keep everyone going and really not worrying about accumulating more wealth even in a way that feels modest mm -hmm. that radically keeps you focused on the actual community that that money is serving uh and so yeah and and also that then just makes sense of a lot of really radical stuff that jesus said as well um so i would say the um yeah we are called to um yeah, reject the ways of this world that don't bear fruit. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not set up to be able to pull that one off uh, in our current context, I think. And I think Jesus also talks in extremes because we are like fairly dense creatures as human beings. And some, some, sometimes we just need the the um, the thing to be painted so l loud and large that, that we, we actually, actually take notice. Yeah, that's right. So um, we're not supposed to gouge our eyes out if we look at someone a bit lustfully? <laughs> well... <laughs> It could maybe cause, not literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or cut your hand off yeah. if it causes you to sin or what have you. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I don't so think there'd be much. Of, I don't think there'd be much of anyone left if we did. Five, yeah, well, five minutes on Facebook and you'd cut your hands off, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> dear so and so, I am writing to correct your opinion about yeah, this thing, right. which always works. Yeah, yeah, it's worked every time for me. And, <laughs> and Jesus did love hyperbole and yeah. use it very well. With it. And and it's part of the reason why people. Um, pushed against him so much at the time. How, how can you possibly say that to you? So we're still listening because mm. he was quite comfortable to do that. Yeah. Mm. But I guess yeah. through that hyperbole, there's uh, another layer of discernment that we need to undergo is, uh, you know, the discernment of what was actually meant by yeah. what Jesus said. And of course, a lot of people have said that a lot of different bits of scripture have meant a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah. to say that you know, you have the one correct interpretation of a passage of scripture as... Uh, also, well, no, uh, no one else. I mean, I do, but if you... <laughs> yeah, but obviously other people don't, so it's a bit of a challenge. And, and I can't be everywhere to give them the correct yeah. answer. Oh, so. uh, there you go. Yeah. So, therefore... And it would take a while to explain, because the Bible's a big book. So. What were we saying about fruit of the Spirit? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And um, humility. No, that's righteousness. <laughs> Self-righteousness? <laughs> it doesn't say... <laughs> But, but I think when we, you know, coming back to how can we discern the will of God, um, we, we've actually gone around this in, in quite a few different ways, haven't we? We've talked mm. about personal, we've talked about um, discerning together, we've talked about call, we've talked about, um, uh, because that naturally comes into it, we've talked about the difference of um, the journey to the, um, uh, the way that we get to a place, a destination, yeah. uh, and then uh, where we get there. Uh, but all of that, I think, comes under the the um, the will of God is the will of God, and we flow into the will of God. Mm. Um, and and maybe for us, we we tend to think of God's will for us, but there needs to be, you know, in Romans yeah. twelve talks about um, uh, the um, God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will I've tended to read uh, for me. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's good, God's good, perfect, and pleasing will for me, which could be. And it's, it's part of the puzzle. But, but if we're going back to, that, to the body, mm. um, the, the, the 
God's pleasing and perfect will is actually for the body. Mm. And I'm just a part of that. So even if you think you're right about your interpretation yeah. <laughs> well, we, of the Bible, you know, you are just part of the body. Yeah, exactly. we're, we're, we are that together. Well, part, of, part of the body's got to be certain. So I'm, oh, well, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> great. certainty is Craig's min, uh, and I do agree. If I came across as being um, perhaps a little bit more certain than I often am in actual practice. <laughs> yeah. And I do agree with you most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, there is, and, and I don't think anyone would say that you haven't done your homework. So no, that's, that's right. Yeah, you have done your homework. Just to clarify, the reason I do that homework is because I'm actually generally incredibly uncertain and, and usually approach passages with a huge amount of naivety, which is just um, I I don't know what this is about, and I'm actually yeah. confused yeah. by it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because you don't get wise without being a very dedicated fool for a long time yeah exactly exactly <laughs> it's a really good way to come to scripture mm. is to come with those and, and discernment you know, yeah we yeah. come we approach it as as people who um are genuinely looking for an answer rather than hoping for the answer that we were kind of look, looking for anyway yeah 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 exactly. there's a there's a phrase that i i quite like myself which is um having a radical humility before the truth mm. uh it's radical humility yeah. before the truth. I like that. Because, it, which I, I guess, again, comes back to that Romans verse of it's mm. uh, not assuming that it's going to work out how I already assume things to work. Yeah. But if there is truth that comes to me and it doesn't line up with, uh, uh, with what I already understand, mm. then I probably need some more context for something. Either the information that's coming in or my current understanding, but that involves a lot of homework, and I personally enjoy thinking about stuff a lot, so I, I tend to get excited these days, which is nice. <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think over and over again, when we look at Scripture, uh, there is that sense of, of um, leaning in towards God. Uh, in the New Testament, we, we would call that prayer. Mm. And we saw that in the disciples. We see that in what Paul writes. We see that in what Jesus says is that, you know, leaning into God, um, finding God's will, discerning God's will is about leaning into God. And that, how do we do that? We do that in prayer and we do that by reading the scripture and all. And then we do that together because mm. that's this, that sense of, of corporate, not just individual. And so for me, that that sort of in everything that we've said, I think it comes back to that. Mm. that we're all called to follow God and to know God's will. And we do that in those ways. Yeah. So if you've heard God's will today in this podcast or uh, you've had a word for us, please email Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's been helpful. It's a good discussion. Yeah. Uh, that, we actually covered a lot more ground than what I think any of us were expecting from this one. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. Open Ended is directed and produced by J.C. Finlay, that's me, for Adelaide West Uniting Church, with music by Tadra Abbott. If you would like to participate in our online church services, they are available on the Adelaide West Uniting Church YouTube channel from 10am every Sunday, Adelaide time. If you would like to get in touch with us, send an email to churchonline at awuc.au and you can visit our website at awuc.au. Thank you.